This is what the viewers of the Sonic 25th anniversary livestream had stuck in their heads. It was a train wreck, put simply. There was absolutely awful audio, poor video, all over the place organisation, and it was half an hour late. So what went wrong? Well, in this video, we're going to go from start to finish and break apart what was really going on behind the scenes and what made this stream such a disaster. If you haven't seen the stream or want to see it again, then I've gone ahead and uploaded it in its raw, original quality for you. So click on the card here to see it. All the other videos of it on YouTube are poorly done screen recordings where the video keeps freezing up and stuff. However, I went and ripped the raw video and audio straight from Twitch and uploaded it. And I believe that my upload is the best quality you can get on YouTube. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's take a look at this. It all started before the stream even began. There were loads of people there. A lot more than Sega was expecting. And if you have more people than you're expecting, then chances are you aren't going to start on time. It meant that there were a lot more people to get in before they could start the show. And this ended up making the entire show half an hour late. This didn't affect the stream until later though, so we'll put that to the side. But it did cause the stream to start half an hour later than it said it would, with no indication to the people watching or anything. Not a great start, but finally, Half an hour late, the stream started. There was some music playing, that was just music for the stream, and we could see this. This is almost like an intermission screen, we'll see this a lot later. And then after a few minutes, the audio went live, and the video followed too. And everything was fine for a little while. Until suddenly, there was a buzz in the background. It was a little hard to hear at the start because the music was drowning it out. But when the music cut out, this was all people could hear. Yeah, the buzz was bad. So, what is this infamous buzzing? Well, to understand what exactly we're hearing, we first need to understand the two teams responsible for running everything. There are two teams that make everything here happen. There's the front of house team, and the livestream team. The front of house team is the team in charge of running the actual show. So they're the people in charge of the lighting and the actual sound for the people there. So the microphones, the speakers, what's on the screen on stage, they basically run the show. Those are all their responsibility. The front of house team was located at the back of the room opposite the stage, which makes sense since they need to be running the show and need to see the lights and what's going on and such. The livestream team is then in charge of well, live streaming the event. So they're in charge of the cameras, setting up crowd microphones so you can hear the crowd in the stream, and all the other things that go with that. They were located on the upper floor of the place, with front of house here and the stage here. The live stream team gets two things from the front of house team. They get an audio feed, which is essentially the exact sound that's being played through the speakers, and they get a video feed, which is what they're showing on the big screen on the stage. So the live stream team can then use those in their broadcast. Now let's get on to the buzz. The buzz was caused by something called a feedback loop. A feedback loop is essentially where you get sound going around and around a circuit. A very simple example of a feedback loop you can do yourself is if you take a speaker and plug a microphone into it. Then, put the microphone right in front of the speaker and make a sound. What happens is the sound you just made gets picked up by the microphone and goes to the speaker. The speaker then plays it back louder than it was and the microphone hears that, which then goes back into the speaker again, which then gets picked up by the microphone again, and you get the sound going around and around, sometimes getting louder and louder. It depends on the speaker and it depends on the microphone. Here's a really good clip of a feedback loop. Now in the case of the buzz, it was obviously not as simple as they left a microphone in front of a speaker. It was much more subtle than that, but there was some feedback loop going on somewhere. And this feedback loop was coming from front of house. It wasn't playing in the speakers, but front of house was giving the livestream crew a signal with this awful buzz for some reason. There's some kind of feedback coming from front of house's audio feed. And considering how complicated the chain is, it's quite difficult to find where it's coming from. For example, the sound from one of the microphones would go from the microphone to the wireless receiver, which could then go into a compressor, which would then go into a mixer, which sends the signals absolutely all over the place inside itself, 
and that mixer would then be what finally gives the live stream team their audio feed. All the sounds you hear goes through so many systems before it finally gets to the live stream team. And somewhere in that huge chain, there's somehow a subtle feedback loop occurring. Most likely around the mixer stage, but it's still very hard to find. So the buzzing isn't entirely the live stream team's fault. In a way, it started off as the front of house's fault. Anyway, behind the scenes, some of the live stream crew is trying to fix the buzz now, so we'll find out where they end up with that as we go along. So the stream started with Hyper Potions doing some DJing, there isn't much to talk about except the awful audio. The rest of Hyper Potion's performance dragged on, with fans growing more and more impatient, but it finally ended, and now people could really hear the buzz. Just listen to this. And then Dr. Eggman started talking, but only in the right ear, and it was pretty quiet compared to the buzzing. And then came the intro. And most of it went by fine, until right at the end of the intro, the audio got the worst it gets during the entire stream. I want to warn you that this will be very loud. I'll have a counter on the screen counting from three when it's about to get really loud. Take a listen for yourself. Yeah, now that is definitely a feedback loop getting out of control very quickly. The audio would have cut out because they were trying to fix it, but when they brought it back, the feedback loop, for whatever reason, was much worse. Anyway, the audio came back eventually, still with the buzz, and after that they finally started the announcements, and those went by alright. The only problem was the audio. Not only was there a buzz, but at some point it just completely cut out, followed by being really loud suddenly. Here tonight, by the way. Just in the signing room, you guys have that on your schedule. The signing schedule is going to try and stay as close as possible to what you see there, so stick to that. Every time it cut out would have been them trying to fix it. It probably became louder every time it came back, because they were most likely trying to send the audio through a different channel or system that just happens to be turned up louder. But then came one of the most infamous moments of the stream. This is where the audio completely cut out for five minutes. But it's not that that makes it so infamous, it's the timing. The stream has been delayed by half an hour. The viewers then had to sit through a 40 minute performance by Hyper Potions, which was then followed by a disastrous intro, and then they had to listen to them announcing things they couldn't have. All the people watching the stream came here to find out about the new things being released. And finally, it was here. And this is what they got. And that question is, what is next for Sonic? <laughs> Last month at the Tokyo Joypolis party, Takashi Izuka, the head of Sonic Team, announced that on... Yeah. It just cut out for five minutes. A lot of the people watching the stream were screaming at this point. They were just about to announce something new, and now it cuts out. So what's happening behind the scenes right now? What the live stream team has done is they've completely disconnected the feed from front of house entirely. So there is literally no sound going to the live stream team. No buzzing, no sound, nothing. All the live stream team technically have now is their audience mics. And if you go in and listen really closely, about 30 seconds in, you can actually hear them turn up the audience mics for a few seconds. Anyway, the reason they completely cut the audio was because it was at this point where the leader of the livestream team, Hunter Bridges, had to make a very important decision. Quote, I had to decide whether to cut, stream and fix, or maximise content people got while hearing my mistakes. So, essentially, he had two choices. He could either just completely stop the livestream entirely, which is partially what he did here. And if he went through with that, then he could really get in there without needing to worry about keeping the stream running and fix the problem much quicker. 
or the other choice he had was to try and keep the stream running as smoothly as he could while they look into the audio problems. That meant he couldn't just go around unplugging things like he'd been doing before. He had to keep it going and only make changes to the chain at really unimportant times like a gap between segments. In case it isn't obvious, he chose the second option in the end, which was to try and keep the stream running and try to fix the buzz in the least obstructive way. Anyway, after 5 minutes of silence, the trailer finally started playing, and a lot of the viewers were screaming for a few seconds until they realised that the trailer did have sound, so that was good. Sega! I'll talk about why that has sound in a moment, because don't forget, they've completely cut the audio feed here. So, the trailer went by without any problems, right? Nope, because about halfway through the trailer, they suddenly brought back the front of house audio feed, and you could hear Aaron talking over the trailer. Listen to this. All right now, give me one second. Stay calm, everybody. Stay calm. We're almost there. I promise. We are almost there. You want this to be one of the reveals? Is that what you said? This is actually just a red herring. Who knows what this is? Oh, oh, wait. We might have something. And then. As if that weren't enough, take a look at what happened after the trailer. At this point, some people thought they just completely and utterly broken the stream. So what the hell was all that about? Well, the answer is actually very simple, and I think it's easier if I just show you. All we have to do is look at a crowd recording. This will not only explain what the hell just happened after, but it will also explain why we could hear him talking over the trailer when they brought back the feed. Let's take a look. The wait is over. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Without further ado, let's see it. Tonight, I'm afraid. That's an extra thing. Oh. 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 
So that almost explains it. Front of house had technical difficulties with playing the video, so the live stream saw it, but the live crowd didn't. So when the video finished playing on the stream, the stream had to get back in sync with the show, and they decided that it would make sense to play it again, since the fans would want to get another look at it anyway. However, this still isn't a full explanation, because whenever there's a video, what they normally do is switch to showing the video feed that Front of House is giving them. Remember, Front of House is giving them a video feed of what's on the big screen on the stage. So whenever they play a video, what they normally do is just switch to showing that, showing what's on the big screen. So what should have happened is you would have seen those technical difficulties on the stream as well. So why did we not see those technical difficulties on the stream? Well, the thing is that if they did show the video on the screen, there wouldn't be any sound to go with it. Remember, they've cut out the front of house audio. So if we imagine that front of house did play the video without messing up, you would have seen it but not heard it. And it takes them a little while to get the audio feed connected again. So, to get around this, what they did, and this is the only time in the entire stream, was the live stream team actually played the video themselves. They literally just straight up played the video on the computer that was broadcasting because there wasn't anything else they could do within 10 seconds. This also explains why even though they've completely cut the audio, we can still hear the trailer without buzzing because that's being played right on the computer that's broadcasting. It's literally bypassing everything. But of course, it didn't quite go as planned because front of house failed to play the video while it was playing flawlessly on the stream. So after the trailer was done playing on the stream, they needed to get back in sync with the show. So then they cut to the video feed and we ended up getting it twice. Anyway, the rest of the opening went well. There weren't many issues there except the buzzing. Then we went into the Dune Sonoe performance, which except being too loud for the first few minutes and occasionally panning, went fine. <laughs> But then, right after, finally, this happened. Right after June was done playing, they fixed the buzzing. In the end, what they did was they essentially swapped what connection their feed was using for an extra one, and that fixed the buzz. The extra connection was probably configured on the mixer differently, so whatever feedback loop was occurring before wasn't occurring on this output. So there you go, buzzless audio feed. Then Johnny Duali came on to do Open Your Heart, and right after Open Your Heart, just before Sonic Heroes, they swapped out the audio interface, which is essentially the thing that turns the sound into a digital signal that you can actually broadcast. Swapping it out in the middle of a stream like this could have completely crashed the stream software. It was a risky move, but they did it, and the stream just survived, as you can hear. Come on now! What's that? That's the sound of 25 years of Sonic! I don't know if it was entirely necessary, but it did sound a little better after the you switch, know, as you can tell. What goes up? Must go down, baby. And this was pretty much the end of the audio problems. There was only one audio problem now, and that was that during the Crush Shorty performance, you couldn't hear the crowd at all. The crowd mics were turned way down, and Johnny, at every single concert of his, always gets the crowd to sing. A lot.
So it made songs like Sonic Boom pretty awkward for the stream. When you lose your mind, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Boom, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Boom, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Boom, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Boom. However, there was actually a reason why the crowd microphones were so low. Quote, I want to add that I chose to kill crowd mics while isolating audio issues. People were singing along to Crush 40. The crowd was ballistic. So they specifically turned them down low, so they could make sure that their front of house feed was all good. It's a shame they did it for the entire concert though. Anyway, I'm getting a bit bored of the audio. Let's take a step back from the audio for a minute and look at the video. Because the audio wasn't the only problem with the stream. So the way the video is set up is pretty simple. They have four cameras, three of which are wireless bolt cameras, and their footage is then received by the live stream crew, put through a switcher, and shown on the stream. But the problem is with the wireless. There was huge wireless interference, which meant that the footage that they got from the cameras was, well, as you can see here, not perfect. There were these constant blocks all over the footage because it wasn't wirelessly receiving the video properly. All these blocks you see here aren't me. They have nothing to do with my upload. As I said before, this is the raw video of what was broadcasted. According to Hunter Bridges, the 300 feet wireless was working at less than 20 feet due to wireless interference. That is a lot of wireless interference and the wireless camera's video suffers. But that wasn't the only problem because at one point one of the cameras just completely gave up during the Crush 40 performance right at the end of Sonic Boom. Just take a look at this. You'll see the screen black out for a second as the camera dies and when they switch to another camera you can see the cameraman in the background leaving. So yeah, they were down to three cameras for most of the concert. Now, if we're being real, the camera probably just ran out of battery. But it's funny to think that it just gave up because it couldn't take it anymore. Anyway, this camera does actually come back later on, thankfully. If we skip ahead to I Am All Of Me, after Johnny sums up how the livestream crew is feeling... One of those very shitty days. If you look closely, and it's just for a moment, but if you look closely, you'll see something flash for a moment on the screen, near the top left. Don't worry, I'll pause it there, but see if you can see it. Take a look. Did you see it? Well, here it is. This is that camera reconnecting again. What they've done is they've now moved the camera up to where the live stream crew is, and they've either replaced the battery or plugged it in, and it's now going to give us this view. So, it sort of got repurposed for that view. Anyway, after their main concert, everyone wanted an encore, but Front of House clearly didn't have the backing track ready, so Johnny had to stall for three minutes before they can get it ready. Folks, in the entertainment business, this is called killing time. Alright, you understand what I'm doing here? We're stalling. Sir, your hair looks lovely tonight. Beautiful. Thank you for dressing so nicely. Yes, look at that. You guys doing alright? Hey, be careful with that. That's dangerous, that thing right there. Keep that away from me. How you doing, you guys? So I, th <laughs> I think there's like, are we going? Things rolling? Yeah, you didn't stop anything, right? Good. All right, you're not fired. It's good. And that was pretty much all there is to the Crush 40 concert. So let's keep moving. After that, they did a five-minute intermission, which they didn't really mess up. Although they tested a microphone over the video. Test, test, one, two. Whatever feels natural to you. Uh, at me. Yeah, a little bit towards the fence. But then comes the next part, and this is where coordination problems now start happening. This stream really is problem after problem after problem. So I mentioned ages ago that the show started half an hour late. Well, that was actually a problem for the stream, because they needed to now condense four hours worth of content into three and a half. 
and they failed. The first mess up was right after the intermission. And it was head of operations of Sonic, the chief grand As officer. We are going to go ahead and move on at this point to the next part of our stage show. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, good. Let's keep moving. So for the next part of tonight's event, we've got a special guest who came all the way from the UK. Hello, everybody. To join us. Welcome again to the live stream for the Sonic the Hedgehog 25th anniversary party sponsored by Totino's. They interviewed a few people on the stream over the presentation on the stage. I assume that had the show not been condensed down by half an hour, the intermission would have been longer and they could have fit this in. But the intermission was only five minutes, so you ended up with this interview replacing the presentation on the stage, which no one wants. At the end of the day, what they're showing on the stage is the most important thing. After a minute or two though, the live stream crew realised that it was actually a really bad idea to be doing this interview now, and so they cut it off. And that's all I'm gonna say. Excellent. Okay. Alright. Back to the stage. This is also where we get to actually see the live stream crew in action as the camera turns and they don't cut away quick enough. There it is, right there. So this is one of the crew members in charge of mixing the sound and video. For sound, they literally only have to worry about three things. The front of house audio feed, the crowd mics, and the interview mic. They just have to make sure the right ones are up at the right time, which considering they rarely have to change, is pretty easy. But to make up for only having to do that really easy job, they're also in charge of video switching, which makes sense. Anyway, now we're back on the stage, and it went by fine for a while. We got quite a lot of things and it all went pretty well. However, then there was a problem. I mean, when is there not on this stream? They moved on to the costume contest, and right at the last minute, someone suddenly, out of nowhere, told the live stream crew that for legal reasons they weren't allowed to show it. So the live stream crew had to cut that. On stage, so hurry, hurry over if you want to take part. We got some cool prizes. Now, as we do this, our live stream is going to be broadcasting behind the scenes to give you guys watching at home. And now, they had no idea what to show. They had to improvise now. So, to pass the time while they worked out what they would do, they played the Sonic Mania trailer for the third time. But it gets worse. Behind the scenes, while the trailer was playing, the live stream host, the guy who was doing the interview earlier, is at a hospital because his girlfriend was in an accident. I'm not even joking. First the buzzing, then the camera problems, then the coordination, and now the live stream host is out with paramedics identifying his girlfriend. If he was there, then it would be a lot better. He could do some stalling or something. But as it was, there literally wasn't anyone to fill in the gap. So after they played the trailer, we were on this screen for five minutes. During that time, they were running around trying to find something to show. They had to improvise quickly here. Thankfully, the people who worked on LEGO Dimensions said that they were available to do an interview, so up they went. Then the only problem was there was no one to actually host the interview. But thankfully, they got one of the members of staff to fill in as the interview host, and off they went. And yes, the audio quality is messed up again here, but in a different kind of way. There are two things this could be. It could either be the wireless, because that camera there is wireless, and the microphone is plugged into the camera, you see. Or the audio interface is playing up, and it's not converting the sound to a digital signal properly. Whatever it was, it fixed itself after about 30 seconds. We're going to be showing it, and we're so excited to show that all the hard work that the, the guys and the girls... But it was weird. Anyway, the interview was just a bunch of stalling for a moment, and they went right back to this screen after. At least there was music this time. However, as if all of that wasn't enough, the host came back and gave birth to the Totino's meme. It's pretty funny though how early it cuts to it. We can still see them cleaning the table and stuff. It takes about a minute before we actually get to what we're supposed to see. I guess the live stream crew were really desperate to get something to show. We are here inside the Totino's lounge where they've given us an exclusive opportunity. He also walked around the venue a bunch showing the place. Honestly, the attendees videos did a better job at showing this than the live stream, but to be fair, it was all improvised. 
the Emerald. I think she's gonna do it. We're having a great time here tonight. Hello, sir. Anyway, finally the costume contest finished on the stage and it was time to finally go back to the stage. And we did. And we're going to take it back to the stage. Take it away, Aaron. Beyond Saturday morning, of course, is Sonic Boom. Hey, hang on just a second. You guys get together. Roger's going to take a picture of you. Ready? Go. Yeah, we need this. Ready? Yeah. Oh! Got it. Woo! Got it. Thank you. You blinked. You blinked. See you in a minute. Awesome. All right, now. Okay, it wasn't exactly a seamless transition, but it happened. But then, just as they were starting to do some voice acting, suddenly, out of nowhere, they cut to an interview with Evo. I love it. Alright, guys, you got a little something you're gonna do. Let's get to it. Sorry to cut you off earlier, Evo Gerskovich. Nope. Sorry, I, I was thinking Robotnik. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Now, anything can happen on a live stream, including schedule changes now. Like, what? I think they were trying to make up for the fact that the interview got cut off earlier, but it was just a confusing mess to the viewer. After interviewing him for a few minutes, they finally finished and said they would go back to the stage. Really good, so thanks for sticking with us, and uh, we love you all. Taking it back to the stage. Except we didn't go back to the stage. We went to the intermission screen. The live stream crew evidently decided that it would be weird if we just suddenly went back to the stage while they were in the middle of something. So after a minute, this happened. Change of plans. I'm going to get my hands on Sonic Boom Fire and Ice for the very first time. Let's do it. I mean... What a mess! The coordination was so bad here, it was all over the place. Thankfully, after a minute or so, he said to the Q&A, and we finally went to the stage. To the Q&A. Wait, Florida, I mean all over the world, you guys, so thank you! I think I speak this is also the only time in the entire stream where someone actually acknowledges the buzzing. Mike Pollock imitates it, although his imitation was really bad, so almost no one got it when they were initially watching the stream, but it was there. Time, and by the way, this sonomy thing is like... Oh no, we're losing it, we're losing it. No, what she's saying, oh no. That was the Oh my answer. god, I just, I, they gave me like 15 seconds and I was going to tell you spoilers, but I can't because I, I can't say anything about the sonomy thing because... Rut row. No, you do remember the episode where it like, and we, and then we, but then it was all settled in the air. You have no idea. He let me do Very romantic. Quick impression. The live stream. There was a. Rebot attack. Amazing. All right, next up, Kirk. Anyway, the next half an hour was how the stream should have been. A bunch of announcements, one after another, all going through quickly and no technical problems. Also, notice how they're using what's up on the screen here for the videos. So when they show a video, they just show the front of house video feed. That's what should have happened with the Sonic Mania trailer if there weren't audio problems. And then finally, we come around to the credits. And they even messed up on the credits. For some reason, at first, they played the credits themselves on the stream, but then they realized that actually it would make more sense to use front of house as playing. So you got this weird fade at the beginning of the credits, where they quickly switch from their own playing to front of house's video feed. I'm not sure why they tried to play the outro themselves there. Maybe they just wanted to be done with this mess as quickly as possible. So, let me just summarise all the problems here. Yeah, basically, everything went wrong. 
That's probably what I should have just said from the beginning. End of video. The livestream crew did a pretty good job of giving as much content as possible, considering how many things went wrong. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. This is actually my side channel where I post random stuff, because this type of video would not fit on my main channel, so I don't really care much about subscriptions here. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. It's always nice to know someone watched the video. Alright, bye.